the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Merry Christmas. Amen. The Lord delights in you. Your parents delighted in you. The neighbors delighted in you. When there was news of your coming birth, people sat around and said, I wonder what they'll be like. If it's a girl, we'll name her this. If it's a boy, we'll name him this. Nowadays, they have reveal parties because they know the gender of the child. And they cut the cake, it's blue or pink, it's very exciting. But before that, before they hadn't a clue. And they'd wait outside the maternity ward, all your aunts and uncles with their face pressed the window. What is it? It's human. And sometimes, sometimes there'd be a fight about what the name was going to be. See, every family is the same. They always want a particular name. You're going to name them. We don't have one of those. How could you name a new name? That's great. Wait till you're confirmed. Pick your own name then. But God picked the name Jesus. God called Emmanuel, God with us. Not in some isolated space, no, but here with us. And why do we celebrate? Because this is not just the beginning of the life of the Lord Jesus. This is our beginning. God breaks back into our world and gives us a way out of sin, a way out of evil. The birth of the Christ child is the dawning of our future. We're called to a mature wholeness and holiness. We're not supposed to be childish all our lives. Although every Christmas you sit around and say, remember when you were little and all you did was like chew on the bubble wrap? Those were great days. I remember when we get to a small thing, put the box next to it, and we had you fooled, you thought it was more, that was cheaper. <laughs> but we're called to an adult maturity in our prayer lives, in our souls. At the creed, when we come to the words of the incarnation, you're invited to genuflect, because God took on the flesh that you possess, the flesh that sometimes gives you problems. Sometimes you have aches and pains, Sometimes your Blue Cross Blue Shield doesn't cover it, but nonetheless, it's still good. Sometimes you look in the mirror, and you're like, well, I'm not in high school anymore. But it's good, and the Lord still delights in you. We come here not just simply to reminisce about Christmas's past, but to begin our celebration of Christmas with worship because we need it. God doesn't need our worship. We need it because it gives us perspective and clarity. There are lots of things that Christmas is. Christmas is standing in line at CVS last night to get gift cards because I forgot to go shopping. I think my family will really like it because I don't know what to do because I don't have a wife. <laughs> but you know, that's not necessarily the meaning of Christmas. It's celebrating someone's birthday in common, celebrating a new beginning for all of us. Yes, we do New Year's resolutions, but this is about internal life, our spiritual life, being devout in faith and understanding who I am, where am I going, and who is this God that comes among us, not in some spectacular display like the altar, but as a baby. And if you've ever babysat, you know it's really not that spectacular. They sleep all the time. They're kind of boring. I babysat my nephews twice, and that was enough. They had to carry me out of the room. They're exhausting, and they're not that interesting until they get to two, which is terrible. And you say to their parents, here, take it home. <laughs> but you know, Christmas seems more enjoyable the older they get. They start playing with toys, they break their siblings' toys, and then you start to teach about why we're celebrating. They're not that interested in that at first, but then they get the story, and the story never leaves us, the story of the Christ child, the story of Mary and Joseph. But don't miss the point. Jesus, our Lord, our God, becomes incarnate, takes on our flesh, and because of that, we have a dignity we can never shake. No matter our mistakes or our sins or our flaws, the Lord still delights in you. Before you were born, people talked about your potential and what you would do, and how you'd run for office, or you'd win the Olympics, or you'd get a Nobel Prize, 
or you'd be a millionaire, whatever, all these dreams they had for you, all these words, you were born and the word became flesh. And they came to know who you were and who God had brought into this world. We hear the dream of Joseph this evening, and Joseph was a wreck. An angel comes, makes you a wreck. He didn't know what to do, but God gave him the strength to do what was right, to follow the call of the Lord. We all have dreams, and people all had dreams for you. Maybe you realized them, maybe you didn't. But this is our beginning, and our chance to begin to make good on those dreams that people had for us and we have for ourselves. But most importantly, to recognize what dream does God have for all of us? A call to virtue, because it's really a call to happiness. A call to that maturity, because it's a sign of integrity and satisfaction. A call to true meaning, and a call to relationship in Christ Jesus. We can reminisce about the baby Jesus, and it's beautiful to come to the stable. But we have to move on from the stable, just like we move on from our little bronze boots when we were a child, up to big shoes, out of the crib, into your own bed, into the world of relationships and demands, and a chance to grow up. But don't forget to grow up in your faith, because it's the only way you'll ever be satisfied. Jesus Christ satisfies all our human longings. Jesus Christ is our beginning. Jesus Christ is our destination.